So good morning and welcome to Conversations with Marie and Renette. This is a new segment on my channel, Cruising Paris. And yeah, let's get right into it. Good morning, Marie. Oh, I'm sorry. Should I call you Marie or would it be more polite to call you Your Majesty? <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Marie is fine. Marie is absolutely fine. <laughs> okay, Marie, it is. So, good morning, Marie, and thank you so much for agreeing to speak with me today. That would be my pleasure. Of course, it's not every day that someone bothers to ask me to sit down and have a chat so i really appreciate you taking the time <laughs> of course i would take the time i think anyone would take the time people would would kill to have you know well no pun intended <laughs> but they would love an opportunity to speak with you and to you know pick your brain a little bit no pun intended <laughs> Just to, you know, find out who you are and what makes you, you know, just to find out more about you. You're, you're such a mystery, I think, to so many people. There's been so much that has been written about you, that has been said about you. Yes, I know that. I'm fully aware of that. And I want you to know that a lot of it, maybe 99% of it, is inaccurate. Well, I believe that certainly, and I would love to, to get into some of these inaccuracies with you today and, you know, find out about, you know, your side of the story, because I feel like, you know, even today when I listen to French children and what they are taught about you in schools and not knowing anything about you other than what I have read and sort of observed or what I believe to be true for myself. It breaks my heart, Marie, to be honest, that the narrative that you were this awful person who was responsible for poor people not having enough bread to eat and who had, you know, committed incest with your child and so on and so forth. Well, let me stop you there with that latter part about my child, my son. And these were vicious lies, vicious lies, horrible, horrific lies. I loved my children, all of my children. I was a good mother. And this narrative began with vicious enemies whispering to each other's ears in the court and spread out to the common people, to the journalists, and to the broader population, and became the narrative that followed me to my grave. I mean, you're 300 years past my grave, and still this persists, these vicious lies. It breaks my heart. Do you know how these rumors got started in the first place? No, I don't. I mean, these types of rumors, you know, just they start, they just start, I don't know where, randomly, some one person decides that, you know, they hate you, they're going to destroy you, and they say whatever they say, and, they, you know, they write it in their newspapers, and the next thing you know, it becomes, you know, they repeat it, and they repeat it, and they repeat it, and then it becomes fact, you see, but these were vicious lies. I have never, ever behaved in a way towards my children that was in any way improper or unloving or unmotherly. I loved my children. They were my whole life. I believe you, Marie, and I'm so sorry that this narrative persists to this day and others as well, like they talked about you stealing jewelry like some very expensive necklace. <laughs> I mean, that was that was a good one. That was a good one. That was also untrue. I I didn't need to steal 
necklaces. I had so many. I didn't know what to do with them. I, I barely had time to wear all of the necklaces I possessed. I, I, you know, the funny thing about all of this is that I really just preferred to be in my garden without all of these things, you know, necklaces and makeup and hairdos and crowns and tiaras. I had really very little interest in any of that. All of that was imposed on me. I was expected to dress a certain way as queen. You know, they literally spent hours and hours and hours every day of my life imposing this persona on me. These clothes, these dresses, the makeup, the hair. And I wanted nothing to do with it. I just wanted to get away and get to my quiet garden, my tranquility, really. And wow, I understand about tranquility and needing that. I mean, I crave that myself so much in my own life that I completely understand what you mean, Marie. And it's really unfortunate that people continue to portray you as this you know, fashion um, slave almost who just lived to wear all these extravagant gowns and all these expensive jewelry to the point that you had to go steal a necklace. It's, it's outrageous. It certainly was, but it's all water under the bridge. You know, it's over now. And where I am now, I'm at peace, you know, and, uh, Let's talk about that. Where are you now, actually, Marie? Where Where do you, I mean, what are you now? Where Where do you live? <laughs> what do you do in your day? Like, what's a typical day in the life of Marie Antoinette? First of all, my name is no longer Marie Antoinette. I mean, you know, that name was given to me by my parents many, many years ago when I was in human form in uh, Vienna, where I grew up. And uh, then I became the queen of France and of Navarre um, years later when I was a teenager. But now I have a totally different name, <laughs> a totally different name. And I live a totally different life and I'm at peace. I'm so happy. Tell us, what is your name now? No, I think that's... That's for me. I don't want to mix, you know, they say you shouldn't mix business and pleasure. I don't want to mix my earth life with the life I have now, you know. So my name now is, is my secret and it's a beautiful name. And my life now is, is just very beautiful. I get to be almost everywhere at once and to see everything and everyone and to just observe quietly and to smile and you know just to to be contented with the knowledge that while I was in my earthly form I was a good person and I did the best I, ca I could under the circumstances I was put into to to be a good queen and to be a good mother and wife Yes, but now I imagine that you are in the form of, of the wind, right? You you don't sort of have a form anymore, right? You don't sort of get to go to extravagant balls and so on and so forth, right? <laughs> you would be surprised, little girl. You would be surprised.